winds were very strong, that, and then they backed off for a while, and then they strengthened, and that air photo that I just showed you was taken when these winds were blowing quite strongly here. So, and then NASA, bega uh, NASA, I've got to watch it. Uh, NOAA began their overflights right here, and they, they had some mapping from aircraft of where the spill was. So what we did, we had a real-time display that was animated. We simulated release of drifters. So we would start a drifter, we would use the currents, and we would integrate the parcels forward in time to make a prediction about where the surface water would go and where the oil would go in the absence of wind. Now, we, we're working to incorporate wind into this analysis, but the surface currents themselves are very strongly affected by the wind, so there is a wind effect in here. And we found that these are the pattern of the arrows here, and we, so these are released, we did this hundreds and hundreds of times over the course of the spill, and this is just a snapshot. Uh, for, for the real-time display, I think the drifters lasted about a day and a half, and then we made them disappear because we were feeding them in all the time up here. But we wanted to have a visual display to the responders about how the oil moves. These, by the way, these are shipping lanes here, and this is Platform Holly. This is a summary of what the data look like. This is the, what happens when you release 465 drifters. They come out at the Channel Islands, and so we're very interested to know if any oiling occurred here. And I just sat in the Refugio oil spill section, beautiful maps of oiling along the coast of the mainland, but I saw no data that's been taken out along the Channel Islands. We'd be very interested to know what the oiling is out there. To, keep, to kind of quantify this, we drew a perimeter around this, and we looked at where the oil, these parcels cross the perimeter, and most, and they're shown down here. For, but, so the numbering goes from 0 to 25, 50, 75, 100, 120, 130, 140. They're listed across here. Most of the drifters cross right in this region, as you see it. So our prediction would be that there would be some oiling of Santa Cruz Island and Santa Rosa. But there were some that moved eastward into the Southern California Bay towards Los Angeles. But that's a summary of what we've done. These are oil platforms that we have, and these show the sites that were used to produce this picture. Just to sum up, some lessons learned. We think the surface current mapping is a good tool to support oil spill response. We work with NOAA. They have a model that's called the NO model, the General NOAA Operational Modeling Environment. And it's run by what used to be called NOAA HAZMAT. I forget the acronyms, they've changed them. But, uh, they use this data in real time to help uh, people place response equipment. We find that these temporary sites can improve coverage, so we can ins we can put the where the hope is that we can move trailers, and when we have a spill like this, that we can set up these temporary in installations. 